Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and this is the Road to the Record, where I work to achieve mastery of 10 games in a hunt for the best score of the Decathlon. If you like what you see, remember to hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. Let the games begin. This is Draft Sports College Basketball, and it's week 45 of the Game Decathlon competition and of this series. 15 years we have completed. We're entering season number 16 with the team. We have had six NCAA tournament bids. We've had four conference championships. That's tournament championships. And a number of others where we won the regular season. And after a few difficult seasons... We are back on top after a 22-win season, and the team is looking better than ever right now. So what better time before we jump into our first game on the road at Valparaiso than we jump in and see how our 281 career wins stack up as a team. So just a couple seasons back, David Wise tied for second best on the all-time uh, single game record for field goals made. Big performance from him there. Field goals attempted. Top was 25. That's happened three times. For throws made. Best was 14 by Ryan Evans. That was a long time ago. 18 was the most attempts. Three-pointers made. We've had nine made in a single game twice. Reginald Neely and Marcus Lowe. I don't remember Lowe terribly well, but I do remember Neely. Neely was a shooting guard. Most attempts, Ian Dawson and Marcus Lowe. Uh, Gainis and then Kenyon Forney, current player. I've been up there. Field goal percentage. In one game, Ray Price against Emmitsburg. That's a big one for us. 89% from the field. And Paul Floyd, who just graduated, matched that against Western Carolina. And a year before against Coastal Carolina, Damian Hansen did that as well. That, of course, has been matched many times, field goal percentage. All right, best scoring performance in the history of the team. David Blackman had 36 points back in 2021 against Savannah State. Ian Dawson, David Blackman, and Isaac Kidd, along with Damian Hansen, all came up one point shy of that. And our best current player, David Wise, had a 34-point performance. Sis. Only 10 players have even reached double digits with Ian Dawson and Aki Collins, the top two in that department. Rebounds. Charles George leading the way with 16 back in 2024. Steals, top performance, six, both by Adam Scales. And Scales, I think, was a power forward, so excellent job by him to get all those steals. And the scales might have been a small forward. Uh, Michael Morrissey, Charles George three times lead the way when it comes to blocks. So Charles George definitely gets credit as the best blocker in the history of the school. And look at that. Look at all those fives that he's managed. And only a few other players have ever even done that. So Charles George uh, led the league season after season in 2023 and 2024 uh, in terms of blocks. Uh, he was all over that one. Let's go ahead and look at some career stats, though. That's one that really matters, and there you go. Charles George right on top with Paul Floyd second. Triple doubles never happened. Double doubles, 5-4 Charles George, Teddy Hazleton, and Paul Floyd. So Paul Floyd just graduated. He had five double-doubles in his career. 
blocks. We already looked at that. Uh, let's see. Games leader, Daniel Earl, Teddy Hazleton, played 122 apiece. Steals, Charles George, 138. I missed that. It's when he graduated that things started to go downhill for a while. Uh, rebounds are later there as well. Assists, Ian Dawson and Aki Collins on top, well ahead of their closest rivals. Points, Teddy Hazleton, our all-time leading scorer with 1,446 points. Daryl Erskine in second. It's been a while since I've seen some of these names. Uh, but here's a current guy, David Wise, has cracked to the top five with split time at his position through most of his career. Kenyon Forney is eighth all-time on that list. Three-point percentage. Only six players have taken enough attempts to even be on this list. But Chad Williams leads a little bit over Erskine. Free throw percentage. Only two players have had enough. Field goal percentage. David Blackman, 54% from the field. That's kind of sad that uh, Darius Galloway had enough attempts to be on this list while shooting 28% from the field. And let's go with field goals made. One last one to look at. Clifton Jennings has made the most buckets from the field with Hazelton second. There's David Wise in fourth with 444 career. And 40 has cracked the top 10 as well in that stat. All right, uh, before we jump into that first game, uh, you know what? Actually, no, let's go ahead and jump in. You've waited long enough. Let's go see what happens at Valparaiso. Well, Valparaiso is in a higher division, but I literally have the best team that I have ever put on the court right now. After a good start, things have gone extremely quiet. Uh, we just got our first points in quite some time. Finally, the game's balanced as we trade buckets. The lead keeps changing hands. We head towards halftime in a pretty tight contest as it was 31-31 rebounds. We were minus two turnovers. Look at that, zero to nine. So plus nine in turnovers. That really should have an impact as the game goes on. Uh, they, if they were only shooting a little worse, 60% from the field, we would be a million times better off than we are. So defensively, we are not shutting them down. And they continue to shoot at 60%. We were below 40 a moment ago, and that's got us down quite a bit. Two for ten from the free throw line it does not help either, and one from six on the arc. And foul, six to one, going the other way. And minus eight on rebounds. Everything is looking that uh, we could be winning this game. If we could only get hot. True freshman, Brian Wormley. Has 14 points on 6 of 11 shooting here in a game. I just used my last time out with only 2 minutes left. It looks like we are going to come up short on this one. David Wise gets 12 points. Forney gets 8 and 6. On 4 of 14 shooting, so there's one of our struggles. And Jamal Small. It's six and four, five rebounds for him. But we were minus seven on rebounds, plus seven on turnovers, which is fantastic. Uh, but they still, in the end, ended up shooting 52% from the field. And we were 28% from the charity stripe. Uh, that's 10 points we gave away. Here's another couple points we gave away. 
and they they were 53 percent from beyond the arc we easily could have won that game if we had played better defense on the shot well that's not the start i was hoping for uh, as we have to play a pretty high division now in Tennessee I think they're in like conference C or something like that so in the third division this year we are now in conference L so that's what 12 conference 12 is it and we drop to 0 and 2 I had high hopes for the start of this season, but it's not up to the start I was hoping for. Of course, Tennessee is a massively higher me, division than we are. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Bobby Gravitt's gone, too. I've had nothing but trouble <laughs> with recruiting. By the way, let's go ahead and get to that now that we're on to a new week. So we'll take a look at recruiting. As you can see, I have zero incoming recruits at this point, and I have four scholarships, uh, but I've had an absolute nightmare of a time. So what I have done, I was down to literally three players left on my shortlist, player after player after player, whether they liked me or not, signed with somebody else. I've never had that happen uh, quite like that. So... I need every position but power forward. What I've ended up doing is I shortlisted a bunch of new players from anywhere all over the country. So now, for the first time, I'm targeting guys from New York, Tennessee, Michigan, Virginia, uh, trying to get something. And I'm going to have to reevaluate as I got 10 new faces that I just found out. Uh, their base attributes and their JP GPA on for the first time. Uh, so right now for point guard, I think Hearns is my guy currently that has a scholarship offered to him. Let's get the call list here. Oh, it's not Hearns. Okay, I have no point guard with a scholarship offered at the moment. Okay, academics are big for this guy. But he's not that great. Uh, move on from here for now. All right, shooting guards. This, uh, these guys are all brand new. This is the first look I've had at them. Two of them are too low on their GPA, so I need to get these guys out of here. They will not qualify for entrance into my school. All right, uh, these guys are all good. Waltman, I believe, has a scholarship offer. Yes, he does. These guys are a bit higher, but is there anyone that I like? Not necessarily. Uh, so we'll move on to small forward for now. Uh, I lost the only small forward that I had. That's the one scholarship that's open right now. So these are five new faces that I haven't seen. Uh, they're all high school seniors, and only Swift would qualify. These guys are not going to make it. So we're going to get rid of them. Okay, Sean Swift, Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, scoring's okay. Defense is bad. I do not like this guy. I'm not going to just up and offer him because he's my only choice. I'm going to go find some more choices. So we left off with Swift. He was actually the low guy on the list. So 
You'll see what it is I did to get to these guys. There's Swift right there. All right, so we move on to Hawkins. He's already signed with Texas Stanford. Now this guy hasn't signed with anybody, so we're going to add him to the list, and we're going to watch film. That's how I know what's going on with these guys. Add to the list, watch film. I'm going to pick five new guys based on who hasn't already signed with someone and making sure that I don't already have information on them. Okay, there's five. Okay, so we move on to our list of centers. These guys I haven't had a chance to scout yet. It's still blank. But just adding them to the call list, I now have their GPA figured out. Uh, 2.5 junior college would be enough. 2.1 is not enough. So two of these guys need to go. Ellis. And a 1.9 is definitely not enough. There we go. Okay, so we're going to watch film on this guy. And we're going to go ahead and give him a call. And we'll try this one as well. We'll watch film. And we will give him a call. This one's okay. Give him a call. We got through, but we're out of time. And I'll go ahead and get a new look on Petty as well. Not worried about that last one. That that'll work for now. Back to the season. All right, first home game: SIU Edwardsville. Let's see if things can go a little bit better because our RPI is ugly. Ugly, ugly right now. All right, there we go. First one of the year, one and two. Next up, number 20, NC State. Undefeated 3-0 so far. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. This would massively boost that RBI, though, if we were able to get a win against the number 20 team in the country. We don't play very many ranked teams. Oh, yeah. Oh, we won. We just beat NC State at home. That's the kind of year I thought we were in for. You have new. You have new. Mail. We wouldn't have beat them on the road, but at home, we're good enough for that. That's big. That is very big. All right, continuing on with recruiting, that RPI jumped a hundred places just like that. Let's see here. Uh, I had new small forwards and centers. Let's start with these guys. Uh, GPA two point five. High school. Ugh, that's that's iffy on whether he'd qualify or not. Two point six should be good. Two point four, not so good. Two point five, e maybe. Junior college, 2.5. They should be okay. All right, we'll leave these guys all on the list for now. Which means now we can look at everyone we've got. Oh, oh, not everyone, everyone. Everyone we've got. <laughs> My list. My list. Let's try that again. By the way, we're just in evaluation. It's a long time before we're going to have contact, so none of these guys are going to sign on with me anytime soon. 
But what I can do is make some calls. Ooh, I didn't get info from him. There we go. Got it that time. So, quick glance at the schedule VMI. We got VMI up next. We're going to be at high point. They're one and three with a low RPI. So, I like our chances this week. So the same Duke team that beat us at the end of the season in the NCAA tournament started the year ranked number one and is still there undefeated so far. Uh, by the way, y UConn lost the championship to Philadelphia at the end of last season. I ended uh, right after our loss to uh, Duke. And we got the win there. We go to 3-2. But now, our chance for our first road win of the year at high point. They're just 1-4. So I like our chances. But any road game is always, always going to be a challenge. And there you go. We go to 4-2. So after a slow start, two road losses to open the season, uh, we've managed to roll off four straight wins since then. But we've got South Tulsa on the road next. They are 3-1. and one. That's not going to be an easy game for us to go and take. But we move into December now. I've got an occupied shortlist again. It's not a great big one. And it's... Definitely not loaded with all those overall A's like I had, so I'm not going to get the big recruit that I got in the past. I just I got slammed in the recruiting market this year, uh, so we'll do what we can. We've got four scholarships. We've got to get somebody on the go. Uh, sad thing is, this is just not the time to do it uh, because. You only get two contact periods over the course of the year. And that's the main main time to do your signings. All right, so we jumped another 30 places in RPI. Uh, a win here versus South Tulsa would help. As A, it's a road win, and B, their RPI has got to be relatively decent at 3-1. and one. But we can't get the road win there. We dropped 4-3. and three. Right now, I feel pretty confident about all of our home games. I mean, we just beat the number 20 team in the country at home. Does that mean we're going to go undefeated at home? N no. But I, I think we could probably manage a, a one-loss season at home this year. I think we're going to hold serve quite well uh, on our court. It's how many road games can we steal. And we go to 5-3, and three, as predicted. You have new mail. Let's see, Valparaiso we lost by 16. We lost to Tennessee by 15. SAU was a 20-point win. We won by 11, uh, 9 over North Carolina State. Uh, VMI was actually kind of close, 7-point game. Uh, high point we crushed, 
South Tulsa beat us pretty handily by 15. So all three of our losses have been right around 15 points. And Des Moines uh, was pretty comfortable. We've got Portland State up next. They are just 1-7. and seven. They are crumbling, uh, and we're at home. So that should be an easy one. It is a rivalry, though, so that's going to give them an edge that other teams don't have. Uh, but we've got three non-conference games left, uh, and San Diego's 5-1. and one. Uh, That'll be tough. Uh, but I think we should be able to go either 7-4 and four or 8-3 and three this season, non-conference-wise. Almost forgot recruiting. And it's like I started all over again, because I literally did. I went through my entire shortlist. Okay, done with that player. This guy's unlocked, so we got a little something out of him. It's another one that's first little bit's been revealed probably by my assistant coach. Wait, I might have to go look after a couple Oregon recruits here soon and try to get that in-state advantage. Uh, luckily, I at least haven't burned through my budget. I've still got uh, 19,000 left. Despite my struggles, my RPI is climbing 112 now. Six and three. Next up, Western Illinois at home. Uh, should also be a win. Quick glance at some of the team leaders and stats. We've got David Wise taking over as our leading scorer. 13 and a half per game. Uh, Forney's grabbing five assists. Small still leading rebounds. Almost seven a game. Also blocks. Also steals. He is our top defender and playing really well. And you have new doing man. most of that out of position at power forward. Uh, as a team, we are 34th in the nation, second in assists. Uh, that was scoring 75, almost 76 a game, uh, which is down about half a point from last year. Rebounds is up a lot from last year, though, but still not good. Uh, our turnovers, we are a plus four per game, so we're sixth in the nation on what we're giving up. Uh, not amazing in what we're taking, but that plus four is a pretty good margin. And in terms of steals, we're doing quite well with uh, only giving up four per game. Okay, mid-December. Let's see, it was a rainy day last time, so we're on a McPherson.
We got everything on him now. So out of that whole list, only one junior college guy. And he's number 70 overall, but he is listed as a C. And it looks like Smith here actually does climb into that A ranking. So, uh, And an A rebounder. Not a great defender, though. That's disappointing. But for a center, we'll see how he's an A. I mean, you look at this. Is he going to get 50 boards a game? <laughs> I think this is my quiet week after rivalry week where I have just one game on the schedule. And it's a win. We go to 7-3, and three, and it is. That, that was the only game this week. You have new mail. You have new mail. All right, let's get the recruiting done real quick, and then we're going to take a look at something here. See, it's not too difficult for me to uh, get players unlocked these days. Uh, as myself, I'm a very good recruiter, and I'm down to just a handful of players that haven't shown interest yet. That are resistors like uh, Grundman here. All right, so we'll go ahead and take a look at the roster, and let's see the stats, see how the players are doing. Uh, we'll start with our starters on top in terms of minutes. Forney's grabbing 31. Wormley's grabbing 31. Perry's right at 30 a game. Small getting 27. And Wise getting 23. That's what I like to see. And in terms of games played, uh, Chris Smith, Travis Snow, Tafflinger, Map. And McCammy have been there throughout. Andre Anderson, just five games played for him. And then uh, our walk-ons have each played just one game in uh, probably blowout situations. All right, top scorer, David Wise, 5.8 field goals each game. No wonder he's in the top 10 all time. Uh, McCammy, his backup right there behind him, he's got about 15 minutes. And then Wormley, a true freshman, 43% from the field. It's not great, uh, but he is getting right there at third most. Field goal percentage, Norville doesn't count. He's only ever had one attempt, but uh, David Wise, 59% from the field. Nice. And Perry, 
a point guard who's playing small forward is shooting 56% from the field. Um, Cammy's doing pretty well at 48, but that pales in comparison to Wise. Uh, Map's doing pretty good for a guy who hasn't played a whole lot of minutes. Kenny and Forney struggling a bit shooting the ball this year. That could be why. See, the majority of his attempts are beyond the arc. And his percentage lines up right there. Yeah, look how well Perry's shooting. There you go, Forney. See that? 29, 28. Okay, rebounds. Wormley leading the way on offensive rebounds. Looks like he might be following his shots really well. Or just really quick feet. Total rebounds. Small leading the way. 6.3. Perry also getting 6. And Wormley 5.1. So it uh, looks like my post players aren't necessarily grabbing boards themselves. But maybe holding off the other team enough that my guards are uh, hustling to each first ball or maybe second ball uh, as someone maybe tips it towards them. Assists, Forney and Perry doing real well with that. Small and Wormley are doing okay. Steals, Small and Forney leading the way. Got plenty of guys getting nearly one per game. And that points per game finally. David Wise getting 13 with McCammy at 11.6, Perry at 11.3, and Freshman Wormley at 10.2 points per game. All right, with the RPI steadily climbing now at 86, we head into our last two non-conference games with a 7-3 record, but a difficult game coming up at San Diego, who is also 7-3. And I think there are quite a few divisions higher than us. Meaning, I don't like my chances. Yeah, I wish I would wasn't getting so used to the odds on this game. I don't get surprised very often on here. <laughs> we head through New Year's. You have new you have new mail. We've got uh, East Tennessee State coming up next. Uh, they have identical 7-4 and four record to myself. I'm starting to wonder, is that our first conference game? Go ahead and get our recruiting done. Grunman doesn't like me much. <laughs> I'm slowly making my way through the new shortlist. Swift is down here, but I've got some interest from a lot of those guys behind him on the list. Uh, 
Oh, let's check that schedule first. Are we... Ah, there you go. Okay, we are into the conference schedule. So uh, we finished the non-conference schedule at 7-4. and four. Uh, All four losses coming on the road. Uh, where we managed to go one and four this season, so not a bad record. You have new mail. Let's see. What are my two games? Let's see. Greensboro. Well, East Tennessee is a better game. They've got an identical record to me, so we'll watch that game. Uh oh, team incident report. That's actually the first one I've had all year. Uh, Courtney Perry, John Matt having a loud argument. Not a big deal. So with four out of five starters back from a year ago, we got a little bit smaller in the lineup. We lost to power forward. We replaced him with a world-class point guard. You can see right away the impact as we take a quick lead going up 10 to 2. Plus four on rebounds, and they are shooting just one of 12 to start this game. Now one of 13. So as we get into the conference schedule and I start playing these low division teams, we can see just how much better I am than them. And to be honest, I'll actually be surprised if we don't win the conference title this year. I think I should cruise to it this year. I don't think I'm going to have a perfect record. I, I could lose a couple conference games for sure, but... We're more than double their score. It's 38 15, 38 17. Blocks are 8 2 in our favor. Rebounds, we are minus 2 on that, but I'm not missing a whole lot of shots, and they're missing a ton. So defensively, uh, we are making life very, very difficult on them. They're 0 for 7 on the arc. And remember, we have identical records. Uh, but it's that non conference schedule. I play a lot tougher schedule. Not that it's the toughest schedule, it's well below what we could be. Uh, but at this point, we're still right about double their score. It's 62 34 with four minutes left to play in this game. Uh, you don't get much more comfortable than this. Jamal Small has 10 points, five boards. Uh, Perry and Forney also have 5 rebounds, and Perry's got 14 points on 5 of 10 shooting. Word Lane, freshman, just 7 points today. Just a couple assists today, but 4 rebounds, 2 blocks, only 1 turnover, only 1 foul. So, all good numbers from him. Uh, a little disappointing from Wise, he only managed 2 rebounds in the game. He had twice as many fouls as he had rebounds. Final score, 68-45. Comfortable win. I like that. All right, well, that's our first conference game of the year. Uh, let's go ahead and sim through one more, and we'll wrap things up. So David Wise might not be great at a lot of things, but he's a good inside scorer. And we have enough presence outside to get that ball into him. 
and he's finishing pretty well, so he's providing a lot of points from us. Meanwhile, Jamal Small, beside him, playing in that post position, is a good defender. It's really, really helping to shut down uh, the other teams. And we actually lost. Uh, NC yeah, Greensboro was not a difficult team, but it was a road team. Uh, I've told you before, road games, you, have you never know. You have They're mail. never a guarantee. I thought that should have been a comfortable win, but I still only would have probably put it at about 70%. So uh, we come out 1-1 one and one in conference, 8-5 and five overall so far. Record's not looking that great right now, but I think it's going to improve quite a bit here as we play our conference schedule out and go into the postseason tournament. But that's going to do it for this episode. I'm Decathlon Gamer, and remember, I'm aiming for the best of the best. So if you're ready to join me on my journey, hit subscribe and tune in next time on my Road to the Record. Bye for now.